Hello, hello, and happy Halloween. This is Chris, a.k.a. Hastiles Trash, and I'm probably going to embarrass the ever-loving crap out of myself because I'm awkward. So this is my first um, official tutorial for my YouTube channel. Everything else I have up there right now is just... Um, time lapses of some of my edits so that you can kind of get an idea of what I spend my entire life doing. <laughs> to kind of start out here, um, I'm on my Tumblr page. I keep everything on this page. This is my main base. This is actually where I got started before I even knew really how Instagram or Twitter worked. Um, so this is where I keep pretty much everything. If you go on here, um, it's got links to all of my social media, um, my edits, um, frequently asked questions and forums if you want to order something from me. Um, you can message me here and I'll, I will most definitely get it. But I have a little search bar here. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to try to find a post I had with free downloads to Photoshop. If you type Photoshop in my search bar, it'll bring up everything I've ever answered about Photoshop. It also has some neat little things. I, it might have some tutorials. I'm not sure if I've reblogged anything about that on here. Um, but you, if you scroll down, you'll find this post that looks like this. And this is going to have um, some free downloads to Photoshop CS6, okay? Um, all you have to do is hit the keep reading button and it'll show you exactly what you need to do. It's got downloads for Mac, it also has downloads for Windows. So um, if you need to know how to install that or where to install that, it's all in this post. If you don't understand how to find this post on my blog, feel free to shoot me a message and I'll help direct you there. But this is for people who can't afford Photoshop and would like to try it out. Um, you've got all your links here and exactly how to download it um, in this post. <coughs> Sorry, I have the plague and I keep coughing. Anyway, if you would actually like to own Photoshop, which obviously is the best answer, <laughs> I have an actual version of Photoshop. Um, just go to the Adobe website. Um, it's just adobe.com and that's I'll put the link up in the video for you. Um, but if you go to adobe.com It'll give you some options if you want to get Creative Cloud for individuals or for business. And what Creative Cloud is, it's the same thing as iCloud on your Mac devices. And that's basically just an interface out there that's going to update whatever products you have when the updates come. It's really um, pretty neat. I always get the newest version of Adobe Photoshop when it comes out. It just downloads through my Creative Cloud. <clears throat> there's different um, things that you can buy from Adobe um, I have most of the creative suite but Photoshop is my main squeeze once you have Adobe Photoshop installed on your computer you can go ahead and open it up and follow along with me I'm not sure I'll get too much within that in this particular tutorial but of course in the future I will. I personally have Adobe Photoshop CC. That's the newest version that's out right now with Photoshop. But you can have CS6 and some of the um, earlier versions of Photoshop and you'll still be able to follow along with me. I've found myself there's not a big difference between them. It really depends on what you're going to be doing. But with what we are going to be doing in these tutorials, it really doesn't matter. Um, you can still find the things I'm talking about. So what I'm going to talk about in this video is going to be one of the biggest questions that I personally get. Um, and that's where do you find your pictures? How do you find the right pictures to use? Um, what base photos do you use? I get that question a lot. Um, and I know that's one thing that tends to set me apart from a lot of other Minip artists is that I have unique um, base photos. Now, sometimes I'll combine several together 
to get the particular look I want. So I don't feel like you have to be cemented down to one base photo. If there's a particular picture you're trying to achieve, like a vision you have in your head, feel free to grab a bunch of different photos and try to piece them together like a collage and make what you want to make. For example, I'm going to my edits tag here. This <coughs> body paint series I've been doing, um, it's hard to find a good base photo like this, although you can. Um, but if you have a really active imagination like I do, and you're going for a particular concept, you can add things on. Now a lot of the things I do is painting, and if you're not a painter, or you feel like that's not a strong point of yours, of course you don't have to do that. But for my concept with this Louis edit, um, was about not being broken and I was inspired by the t-shirt he wore on tour that says not heartbroken on his chest and so here with this body painting edit um, I took some extra black up in here and, and kind of made that broken look that I was looking for so I mean you can always go in your pictures and and change them to how you want them don't feel like you have to just use the base photo with a picture of somebody else's face there's a lot of different things you can do with photo editing and I think that's the fun part about it um, as far as looking for the perfect base photo you really need to have a concept in mind Sometimes I'll see a picture and be inspired by it and be like, oh, I really want to use that as a base photo, but that's not always going to be what's going to happen. So for, if you're going to do um, superheroes, which I've done with the boys before, obviously all you would need to do is open up good old trusty google.com. Um, this is going to be your best friend in minute making this is what most people use. I also use stock images which I've had a lot of people ask what is a stock photo. Um, a stock photo is photography that you pay to use so that's what a lot of big companies use that's what people who sell things use because you have to be able to own the rights to that photo in order to be able to turn around and sell something yourself using that image. So. I have a stock account set up with Adobe stock and that's just stock.adobe.com. They've got some pretty good packages with this if you don't mind to spend the money. Of course I've already gone crazy and I only have two images left this month. <laughs> but um, they have some pretty good deals going on with Adobe stock and they've got some really nice images as you can see down here really good quality stuff so this is where a lot of my big edits come from is getting some good stock photos to work with because my main thing is finding a good quality image you don't want to get a super tiny photo to use as a base because it's just the quality of it is going to look really bad so that's why I like to use stock photos they're very big and very very high quality. Um, you don't have to use Adobe for this it's just I already have an account with Adobe so it was easier to kind of get a deal that way but there's also a lot of other good stock photo websites I've used like Dreamstime. Um, I'll put the link in the video dreamstime.com um, this also has a lot of good stuff. You can sign up for free and then look through their download plans if you want to spend the money. This is really if you're super serious about photoshopping like me. Um, otherwise, you might not want to spend the money on stock photos and just use Google. Um, but for example, superheroes. Um, when I was doing Harry as Thor, um, you know, Type in Thor. It's easy as that. No, not Thor. Thor backslash. Um, type in Thor. Look through the images. See if there's anything that stands out to you. Obviously, you're going to want to find something that um, has a good angle for you. Depending on who you're wanting to manipulate into this photo, you need to kind of have a knowledge of what photos you have access to of that person so that you know what facial angles you're going to be looking for 
Um, and of course, I will show you what I use myself for One Direction. But obviously, this does not have to be centered on One Direction. It can be anything you want. Um, God, I'm so gross. Like, I'm like burping and being disgusting. Story of my life. The story of my life. I use this one um, in full. Like, I found a really high definition like this like a high definition photo of it I think I use this one exactly um the good thing about Google is it's going to tell you how big the picture is in the description over here which is really awesome because you want to go for something you know the larger the better you really can't go okay well that's stupid I was going to say you can't go too large I guess you can it's depending on what you're doing if you're doing print you're going to want something huge if you're doing it just for the computer um, I really want to say the the biggest I work, I mean this, the smallest I work is usually about 800 to 900 pixels. Um, I really don't like to go smaller than that. I will if it's a base photo that I'm like, oh my god, I have to have to use this. Otherwise. I like to stick to 800, 900, or above. So this one's 1920 by 1080, which means it's wallpaper size for your computer. That's a good, that's a good um, quality photo. I'm not gonna do a full edit today, um, especially since I've already edited this photo before, um, and I don't want to take up too much time. I'll show you in another video how to do a basic edit, but. Um, so basically you're gonna, I love how I didn't even tell you how to do that. So you've got your picture. I mean, you all are not idiots. This is basic, this is the basic stuff. But um, all I did was, you know, right click, copy image, or you can save this and open it. It really doesn't matter, whatever you wanna do. Um, and then I went up to file, new, and that goes ahead and automatically fills in the settings of this photo for you. It's got your width, your height, your resolution. Now what your resolution and your color mode is, that's never really going to be need to be changed unless you want to do this for print. There's two different settings for web images, which is stuff you're going to see on the computer, and if you're going to print. Because a computer is backlit, it's got light coming from the screen so your colors are going to look much brighter so that's why you've got a different resolution for pixels per inch and you've got RGB color scale which is red green blue color scale if you're wanting to do print then you're going to want to change your pixels per inch to 350 that's going to give you better quality when it prints it's not going to look as blurry and your color mode is going to be CMYK. That's cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. <coughs> and you're going to need that different color scale because when it prints, it's going to be much darker. But today, obviously, all we care about is 72 RGB. That's already going to be there for you. You don't even have to worry about it. So you're just going to hit OK. That's going to give you that blank canvas. And then you're just going to go to Edit and Paste. And that's going to paste your image there. If you're going to want a different size than this, you're welcome to crop it, and I think that's what I did. You're just going to hit your crop tool over here, and that's going to be under magic wand. Um, and you can just bring it in whatever size you want it. I think mine was like that big. I made it almost the same size as an Instagram panel. Now, this is not the full size of your photo. They automatically fill it in to fit the screen. If you want to look at it 100%, you're just going to go up here to your second bar at the top, and you're going to hit 100%. That'll bring it at actual size. So this is the actual size of the image. If you want it to fill screen, obviously hit fill screen. If you want fit screen, go back to fit screen. And obviously you have your zoom in, zoom out tools and stuff over here. Those are always going to be handy. Now, the next most important thing, finding the right photo to fit here. 